Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, so uh, this road trip to uh, Colorado and Utah, you always talk about how it's really difficult because it's the only one in the conference that you have, it's, they have to travel to two different states. Um, and also you guys lost one of the games last year. I know Ari didn't play, but is this even more of a difficult trip this year just because it's your first time going on the road in this environment? Yes, I think it's more difficult because of that. Um, just going on the road, this environment, there's so many other factors like you know, we can't eat on the plane and we're, we're chartering, which is great, um, but can't eat on the plane. I think it's just a lot of stressors for student athletes to travel because you've seen it across the country and in the Pac-12. People that go on the road are just getting smacked in a lot of places. So definitely don't take this road trip lightly and just a lot more adversity because of the situation. And what do you see from Colorado this year? I know last year you guys really struggled to score against them, but Ari was out. Yeah, Aerie was out, um, but there was a lot of factors. Not to make excuses, but we had like the whole team on Tamiflu because of the flu. We had Kate in the hospital the night before. So it was a very, but despite all that, we got our butts kicked. Um, could not score. I, they had 20 offensive rebounds. Um, um, they just killed us. So we know it's very tough to play there. That's a really challenging road trip just with your full team. So we're ready. Um, hopefully we won't have any circumstances like last year. And we know it's, it's not a road trip you could take lightly because we see that, you know, they just beat um, Utah by 30 points the other day and they're, they're playing good basketball time. So we know it's going to be a challenge. Alec, go ahead. Hey, Adia. Um, you've had a lot of new pieces this season with, with Bendu and, and Shayna and, and Lauren. Have you felt like those pieces the first couple weeks have, have meshed well? Do you think uh, it, things their performance is translating the way you expected to when when you brought them here yeah um you know it's so bendu wasn't hasn't been healthy for a long time hasn't played in a while um so didn't really know what to expect right away but i've known her since she was like in eighth grade so i uh, just know her as a player know what she can bring um and just just because because i've known her she hasn't even played her best basketball um she's just getting healthy she's not even 100 percent. so she's just kind of working back into things but She's a spark plug for us. Um, she brings energy. She gets so many hustle plays. I know you guys have seen it. She'll sneak in for offensive rebound and get an and one. Um, she'll make a tough play, cause a turnover. She'll get a great deflection. So she does all the things I really value. Um, I think the chemistry between her and Ari and Sam has been great um, and Trinity and Kate. So I think that, but we're just mes meshing. You will see us look very different in January and February than you do now just because of game experience and just time to work together but um yeah i think that she's meshing well and um it, i just expected what she's doing i expect even more and then i know you tweeted this out last night but but tara got her you know pa had the all-time record uh for wins last night just what what is seeing that accomplishment especially from a pac-12 coach you know uh mean to you and when you were building the the vision for arizona how much did you ever, did you envision that Arizona could become a, a Stanford? Well, I hope, um, you know, Tara is a legend, um, a trailblazer, someone who I truly respect um, for a lot of reasons. When I was a player, she was a coach and they were really good back then. So that was a long time ago. And for her to sustain this, this success for so many years is just remarkable and very hard to do. Um, but I think that the things I noticed, which I didn't know as a player, is just coaching against her. She's very difficult to coach against her team always plays well they're um they run a lot of difficult things like she's just a great basketball mind and so i respect her more coaching against her and the things that i really love about tara is she's someone i can call at any time so you know i called her last week i can call her and ask her her opinion about something or ask for her input and she'll always be honest and it's not to benefit stanford because we're competing it's just for like the truth and so i really really love that about her um, she supports women's basketball. She promotes women's basketball. And, um, you know, she does everything the right way. So I, I think she's phenomenal. I think she's one of the greatest of all time. Um, I think she's done so much to change the game. And I hate coaching against her and I hate playing against Stanford. Uh, back in the day as a player, I loved playing Stanford. You know why? Because whenever we played at Stanford, we could all jump higher. Because I don't know if you guys know, this is probably aging myself, but years ago they had springs under their court. So you could like, you could literally sit on the court and like, if you had a, if a cup of water on, on the court, it would like bounce and shake. 
So we would all go to Stanford when I was in college and we'd be like touching the rim because I couldn't touch the rim anywhere else, but I could touch the rim at Stanford because it was so bouncy. They don't have that anymore, but I remember that about Stanford. But she's just, she's a legend and I'm so happy that it's her because she's just done, she does things the right way and she's a, you know, a good um, face of women's basketball. Jay, go ahead. Um, uh, Adia, with this being the first road trip um, and, you know, some of the stuff that you mentioned uh, a, a minute ago, you know, how do you keep the, the, the players zeroed in on, you know, the fact that you've also got these games to play, you got all these things you got to do extra, but you've also got these these games to play, is, it, is that, you know, a tough thing? Do you think it's, uh, it's, you know, pretty manageable and how will you do that? It's manageable, but it's very tough. Um, I just have tried to get input from like football and different sports. And on the road, it's, it's not fun for the players right now. It's kind of, um, you know, on the road there, because you can't do anything. So we're going to a hot spot, like Colorado and Utah, it's the infection rates are very high. So it's a little bit scary. Um, so you're limited in the hotel. You can't go in the lobby. You can't go out and take walks or go places. So there's just, it's just a lot more, um, you know, you're, you're just kind of more isolated. Um, there, you're, you stay in your pods. So if you had a roommate, you stay with that roommate in the hotel because then we, you know, decrease on, on the plane, you're still with that person. So uh, I hope you really like your roommate um, and you like your person because you meet with them for days um, in a hotel room, not doing much. But I think it's just challenging because of those things. Usually a road trip is, um, is fun. Um, it's, you know, you play games and it's tough, but, but you also like, if we have a day in between, we go to a restaurant or we go see something or I let them go to a mall or something, or we do a team activity. So we can't do that now. So it's, it's harder, I think, psychologically and just mentally for the student athletes, but it's also the situation right now. And what are things we can control? We can't control that. So we talk a lot about just controlling the controllable and make the best of it. We're going to maybe try to find a big conference room and, and watch a movie or play games or do something we can do just to make it a little bit, um, you know, less stressful for the student athletes. But yeah, then on top of that, then we have a game. <laughs> so, so, but I, but the thing is, honestly, if you asked everybody, would you do that or would you not play? They would all say, we do that. So everybody wants to play. So just the fact that, um, you know, I'm blessed that we're playing because we could be like another conference and they could say, no, we're shutting everything down, but they're allowing us to play. So I'm just grateful for that. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Adia, how do you I possibly get enough sleep? I probably don't. That's why I look so old right now. <laughs> I look, um, yeah, I don't. I think I'm actually, you know, it's funny. So the 12 week old, um, she does sleep the best I, I didn't anticipate. Like the first couple of months, I was like, oh gosh. But, um, but now she's, she's sleeping like six, seven hours. So I'm actually, I'm actually good. But I just find a way to make it work. Did you ever have any apprehensions you could pull this off this year? like just being a mom or play or what, what part of it? Combining the two. Um, yeah, I knew I could pull it off because I'm just used to dealing with stuff. I think um, for me, it was more of a blessing. If I had the opportunity to do that, I was more grateful. So I think I look at it more like, gosh, I mean, how many 43 year olds have a baby? Not a lot. So I think for me, it was more like, I would love to be in a situation where I could have to do that. Um, she's a great, she's a beautiful baby. She's just a really good baby. I think the the challenges are like more than the situation and balancing. It's more COVID because no one can meet her. Normally all the players are over. I think that's been the hardest part about it because normally I'd have players over all the time and they would be watching her here and there. Um, but now the team hasn't even met the baby yet. They'll meet her tomorrow. So she's going on her first fight tomorrow, which is scary. I think not only as a coach, but like as a mom with an infant <laughs> traveling during COVID um, during a pandemic is is very nerve wracking. And that's my personal situation. So I deal with it. I'm not going to leave the baby so young, but, um, but it's, it's kind of scary. And we're going to a really uh, red zone. So I think that's more, that's probably the most challenging part so far. Cause we didn't need to travel up until now. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Ryan, go ahead. Um, so you started Bendu last game. I'm just curious if that's something that you want to continue doing and, and why you like her in that role. Um, I think that I was just looking for a way for us to start off a little bit, just more energy. And I don't think it was only the Bendu change. I think it's just, she's a really high energy player. Um, she's someone, but sometimes that's also a benefit of having her come off the bench because you have that spark and you have like other starters because 
basically we have eight starters on our team. They can start at different programs. So for me, I'm not so bought into like who starts, who doesn't. I just was looking, we were starting so slow. So I wanted to make a change to see if that was, if that could address the problem. We started off better, but you know, Shana is such a great player. Shana even coming in as another starter off the bench with Helena gives us another starting group. So there's a lot of benefits to that. And I think enable Shana as a, a point guard, a two guard, to be able to look at the game, like assess what's going on and, and go and then I can move Ari to the one or the two. So I think the plan was good. I think Shayna was really excited about it because um, it's a good situation for her too. But um, just had to make changes because I just didn't like the way we were starting. But I'm also, I'm not so like fixed on who has to start. I think that the main thing is to win the game. It doesn't matter. If we play a team of five guards, I may start five guards one day. So I think that I'm not so, I don't want our team to get caught up in those things because those things are really not important. Um, I, you know, I, th I think that they don't matter. And if they want to win, and that's the main objective for our team is to win, it shouldn't matter. And what if I start three bigs one day? It, it shouldn't matter who we start if you're trying to accomplish a mission, that's the win. At the same time though, I mean, what was it like? I mean, you start her and then she hits that three pointer to open the game. I mean, that, as a coach, that's gotta feel pretty good. Yeah, Phil, but also, and in, in yes, I, and that's what we talk a lot about because if you know Ben two years ago, she was never a shooter. She was always the best athlete. So when you're young as the best athlete, you don't really have to do much because you're just athletic and you kind of kill everybody with your athleticism. She has grown and evolved into that. So now that she, and she's actually a good shooter. And I talked to her the other day about not passing up shots because she can shoot it. And by her shooting it, her drives will be more open. So we talked a lot about it. We're working on it every day. Um, so you'll see her continue to improve and get confidence in it, but very big. She's hit some big threes and she always brings the other stuff. So that's just a plus. She dives on the floor. She, you know, chest bumps, Ari and Kate and Trinity. Um, she's just one of those, those glue kids. So if I told her she starts tomorrow, she's happy. If I told her she comes off the bench, she's happy and grateful. So she kind of is like, whatever role I play coach, like I just want to win. And that's what I love about her. And I, I saw her tweet after was like, she's finally having fun again. So I, and f winning's fun um, for sure. But I love the fact that in this program, like she came here and she has her love of basketball back. And I think that that makes me feel good because that's a, the experience of a student athlete is one of the most important things. You're supposed to love it. You're supposed to have fun. I mean, life is hard. Basketball should be a fun part. And basketball should be something you love and it should be an outlet. Kim, go ahead. So you talked about you're taking a charter this week. Is that going to be throughout the season? Or are you guys playing that by year still? Or how's that going? Well, I mean, I don't know yet. So <laughs> playing it by year still. So if you can help us out with that, it's great. Go ahead and send a tweet out or something that we want charters for all the trips. Because uh, we could use some help on that. Charters are um, a huge financial um, obligation for the program um, in, the, in the school. So I just appreciate Dave so much of valuing our team and understanding what's going on and giving us the, the best chance to play. And I think someone who has been behind the scenes with that is Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul, he's actually a doctor when I was here at Arizona, so I've known him for many years, but he's the head of all of our um, COVID stuff. And he's, um, you know, helped with that. And, and I don't know if we would be able to play this week without a charter because the, the rate, the numbers are so high and we've been lucky knock on wood to not have any situations. And I think that if we're not chartering right now in the situation right now and how many numbers there are, I don't think we would continue to play for a while. So I'm thankful. Um, I know it costs a lot of money, so I don't take that for granted at all. Um, and I, it just gives us our best chance. And, and I could tell you guys from just traveling in Tucson, it is a world of difference chartering. Um, so now I know like what the men get and it's just amazing. Um, you know, so it's a typical example if we weren't chartering in Utah is let's say we played at noon, we'd finish the game at two. A lot of times we wouldn't be able to leave till six or eight at night. So, and then if you know, on Sunday in Utah, everything's closed. So last year we were stuck for like six hours in a restaurant. So it's like that, it's just hard. Um, I think other places are different because you can maybe go to a restaurant and take them to sightsee or something. But chartering, like right after the game, you just throw sweats on and get back on the plane. It's 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 way different for the student athletes. And and I know the way I feel after chartering. So other trips, I'm wiped out. Sometimes it's like nine hours. So um, you know, I know that the student athletes, it just helps us be more successful because it saves their bodies. And um, beyond the travel, 
what are you looking for in Colorado and Utah this weekend? Very tough. Um, so this is a this is one of the worst trips as far as just it's a difficult trip. Um, you know, it's freezing there, it's snowing, it's just the altitude. They they run they run up and down the floor. I think they know everybody goes to that Utah so or Utah and Colorado. So they literally they are really trying to run you. So you could tell they want to run. They're a very good transition team. They're very good at offensive rebounding. Um, this year they're not doing it as much, but in the past they did a lot of two threes and traps and just different things like that. So really aggressive defense, um, just kind of um, hard nosed boot collar team. And then you know Utah kind of the same thing. Utah runs a lot of offense, spreads the floor out because has a lot of great shooters. Um, so we just we have to bring our A game. Like we can't go there and play average. We have to go and and be ready to play and be ready to defend and we have to be able to run with them. Um, so excited, but it's a challenge. And I think that we're up for the challenge, um, but it's, it's not an easy trip at all. Anything else for coach? All right, thank you very much, coach. All right, you guys stay safe. Hey, Ben, dude, good, good to have you on the, on the call. And you got your first start uh, last week against ASU. Just what was that, what was that like for you in, in coming in and hitting the three? Um, you know, it was fun. My coaches had believed in me to start, so it was just fun to have, be able to start with my teammates. And, you know, hey, they, they're leaving me open because they, they know I'm a driver, so um, I'm just knocking down open shots. It was your first game against ASU, too, which is obviously a big rivalry uh, you know, between the two schools and, and basketball. What, what was that like for you to play in a, a big rivalry like that and be able to have an impact in, in a game you guys won handily? Um, I love rivalry games. You know, uh, we had the Indiana-Purdue rivalry when I was at Indiana, and I, I just love it, rivalry games. Um, you know, they have – it gives you a little bit more motivation when you play against your rivals, especially in-state. Um, and so, you know, Coach Barnes was – you know, on us all week just because she wanted us to beat them, you know, um, just because she, I don't think she lost when she was um, playing here. So she was just like, kind of installing the same thing against us. You know, we don't lose to, to Arizona State. And then it's your first season here. What have you liked playing at Arizona? What what makes you a fit here? Um, I just like everything, you know. I, I think our style of play fits me very well. Um, I love the players. I love the coaching staff. You know, they've been very welcoming and everything is easy to learn here because um, uh, like it's it's not anything is nothing's hard because I've done it before so I think it's more just being able to play with my teammates and it's just fun. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, how did you find out that you were starting and and what was your reaction to that? Um, so, I mean, it, no, I didn't really know I was starting until like the start of the game. Um, and so I I, I prepared the same way. Um, if I was coming off the bench or if I was starting, so it wasn't anything different. Um. They just kind of told me I was going to be in the starting line right before the game. And, you know, I was ready. And when you hit that three, was it kind of what was the feeling like? Was it like, oh, a good way to settle into the game or, or what was kind of going through your mind when you hit that three? Um, I just knew we needed to get some points on the board because they had score first. And uh, we've always like the last three games, we had slow starts. So being able to get some points on the board and just get us our team rolling was, you know, it was fun for me. And Adia said she she's talked to you about making sure that you're taking open shots. Like, what what are those conversations like? Um, she just tells me to shoot the ball all the time because <laughs> um, you know at Indiana I didn't shoot that much, so she's here like she's telling me like she's in my ear constantly, just telling me I need to shoot the ball, I need to shoot the ball, keep shooting the ball. When you're open, shoot the ball. When it, it, if, she's like, I don't care if you miss to shoot the ball. You can shoot the ball a hundred times. I don't care. Just, just make, you're going to make at least, she's like, you're going to make some of them. So if you shoot the ball a hundred times, you're going to make a, some, some of them. So just keep shooting. And that's just giving me more confidence to shoot. And I mean, you see it in games. I'm not hesitating with my shots. Um, I'm putting them up and, you know, I'm knocking some down. Kim, go ahead. So you guys are heading out on the road for the first time. What are the feelings, you know, considering everything that's going on? Um, I mean, we're going to be safe as possible. I know the whole COVID situation scares a lot of people with traveling, you know, on airplanes and stuff like that in hotels. But I mean, we're going to be safe as possible. Um, I'm excited to be on the road because it's my first road trip with the team. Um, first Pac-12 road trip. I've never been to Colorado or Utah, so it's going to be uh, interesting to go down there. I know it's going to be cold, so I'm excited for that. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're, it's just going to be a regular road trip, I think. I think with the COVID situation, we've been dealing it, with it for months now. So 
we're going to just be ready and, you know, everything changes. Um, so it, it doesn't matter. We just got to stay ready. Ryan, go ahead again. Yeah, I, I saw you tweeted something about how you're having fun again. Um, is that because you're on the court again? Is that because you're at Arizona? I mean, or was there a time when maybe you weren't enjoying basketball as much as, as you had before? Yeah, no, after I got hurt, um, I mean, I obviously I rushed back to play, but when me rushing back to play, I just wasn't having fun like at all. Like me playing last year, I, I just didn't have fun because I think I, I just rushed everything. And now that I'm able to settle down and kind of like look back at everything that I've been through, it's just fun to be able to play on the court and be, you know, with girls that, you know, have my back and like, like I have theirs and the coaching staff that trusts me and believes in me. And so it's just, I'm just having fun again. I'm just able to be myself and have fun. And so it's just, I don't have to think about too much when I'm on the court and it's just, it's just about playing. And how, uh, how much better physically do you feel now than when you played those few games last year? Oh, I feel 100% better. Um, I'm, I think I'm about, about 100% now. Um, you know, I still have little aches and pains here and there. But other than that, I feel 100% better than I did when I played those six games. What do you think, like, what, what is, what do you think your main role is on the team? Like, when you step out on the court every time, like, what are you trying to add to the, add to the team? Um, I think I bring a lot of energy. I think I bring a lot of different things each game. Uh, it just depends on what they need from me that game. Um, sometimes like they need scoring, like in the UCLA game, you saw that I scored a little bit. Um, and then other times they just need de a defensive presence uh, and some energy. And so I think I just bring a lot of different things to the table. It just depends on what team we're playing. And, um, you know, I'm just ready for anything. When they ask, whatever they ask me to do, I'll do it. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah, what, what's it like playing with Ari? She's obviously one of the, the better players in college basketball so just what's what's it been like playing with with someone of, of her talent uh it's fun I've never played with a, a person like like her um it's fun she has a high motor um she pushes me every day in practice and, you know on the court she's also telling me to shoot all the time when I'm open she says she doesn't care if I miss 100 shots she wants me to shoot because she knows you know I'm a good shooter but it's just fun um it, I sometimes I catch myself just watching her honestly like she does so many amazing things on the court. It's just like when she had, I think she had two shots or two threes in a row. And that was just fun watching her. Like when she go, when she's really in her zone, it's just fun. Um, but yeah, I love playing with her. And then there's just been a lot of, a lot of new pieces on Arizona between you, you and Trinity and, and Lauren. How do you think uh, the chemistry between, you know, the new people and the, the returners have, have meshed so far? Um, I think we've meshed really well. Uh, but I still think that we have more learning for like to do because we're not really there yet. Like, you know, you see the returner, Sam, Kay and Ari, you know, they already have their cohesiveness and like us, we're trying to get into that. So I think we're still trying to find our way around, but I think we're doing pretty well right now. Um, you, you see every game we get better each time. So but I just think that it's by the time we hit March, we're going to be a whole different team. Ryan, go ahead. Adia was saying that uh, when you were uh, uh, like young, I know she's known you since you were like in sixth, sixth grade or something like that. Yeah. She was saying when you were younger, you were just so physically gifted that you could drive past people all the time. You didn't have to rely on, on your, your shot. Is that, would you say that's a pretty accurate assessment or? She, yeah, like, no, she literally, that? she, every time she tells me that I couldn't shoot in high school. Now she's like, you can shoot, you worked on it so much. So you have to display it. And I mean, that's just how I, it's always been. I was just always been bigger and stronger than everybody and like faster than everybody. But after my Achilles like injury, I'm not as fast as I used to be. So like, I got to use my shooting ability now. So she's, that's why she tells me to shoot so much because she knows I can shoot now. And I've worked on it so much that I just need to apply it now in games. And so when you got injured, is that something that you were thinking about is, oh, I might not be the same um, athletically, so I need to I need to improve the other the other skills in my game? Um, yeah, I just wanted to improve my three point shot, because obviously I think I went from like having like 30 my freshman year to like 20. And so nobody was really even guarding me on the three point line and made me hesitate a lot. Um, so now this year I just kind of focus on it more just to be able to knock down open shots, because I know our team is going to need that just to space out the floor because they know we're. We're a hard team to, uh, to guard when we're driving downhill, but they know that we haven't really been hitting open shots right now. So me being able to come in and knock down open shots, you know, spreads out the floor for, you know, me, Shayna, Airy, um, and the post players. So it, it's been really helpful. And when you say you work on your shot, I mean, what like what kind of drills do you do? Or do you, did you change your shooting form? Like what, what does that entail? 
Uh, no, I didn't change my shooting form or anything. Um, it's just I'm used to my hand now because I broke my hand um, after my freshman year. So now I'm used to my hand on shooting the same way. Um, but it's just like a lot of three point shots, just getting up, up, you know, 300 to 500 three point shots a day, you know, trying to make at least half of those. Um, and just, you know, be consistent, you know, not and not um, pass up over shots during practice um, when I have them. And, and you seem very aware about what your percentages are. Is there, is there a target percentage that you have right now? Um, I don't have a target. I just want to shoot better than I did my sophomore year. I don't want to shoot 20%. I want people to actually, you know, guard me on three-point line and know that I'm, I'm a threat from there. Anything else from Bendu? All right, thank you very much, Bendu. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. All right, thank you, everybody. A uh, really quick question for anybody who's still here. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do post-game for our road games? Um, it would be great if we could have some access at least to Adia. I know sometimes it's hard to have time to do everyone, but at least if we could get something from her. Okay. I well, just, like one, I like just, one player, one player at minimum would yeah, be. Yeah, I just I just. Cool. I just have no idea what our post-game timeline is going to be, whether it's going to be we would do it at the arena, like in a room there, or we wait till we get back to the hotel. I just I just don't know. Yeah. Either one's fine. You know, just let us know, and um, I'll, I'll definitely be there. Okay, yeah. and since the game is at 5, if we are trying to rush out of there, then maybe I will do it at the hotel. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. So I'll let you guys know. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thank Adam. Yep, no problem. See you guys. Thank you.